Okay guys, so here we are at the scroll saw. Um, now cutting this stuff uh, isn't too difficult. Uh, now I realize that not everybody has a, a big scroll saw like this. If you don't, um, I find that a, a grinding wheel on a Dremel works pretty well too for this small stuff. You can use a bigger grinding wheel for the long cuts. Um, but for this detailed work, you're probably gonna need a Dremel. Or again, something like this is just perfect. The downside to using this is that it will wear out a saw blade um, in probably oh, about 12 inches of cutting. It's really surprising. Now right now I have a 15, a 15 tooth per inch blade on here and it lasts a little bit longer. If you use a finer blade, um, it makes a much finer cut, which is great, but it wears out really quick. So you kind of have a compromise there. I'm going with a little bit coarser, coarser blade this time to make it last a little bit longer. Um, when you're cutting this stuff, the dust is really bad, so make sure that you wear a respirator. Uh, on a scroll saw, there really isn't that much dust, but if you're going to be using a grinder at all, you're going to need a respirator. Uh, this stuff, once it gets in your lungs, it doesn't go away, so uh, be smart about this stuff. All right. Typical saw cutting rules apply here. You always want to cut on the outside of your scribe line. Um, you can always file it down or sand it down later, but if you cut it too narrow, uh, it's, it's really hard to put extra carbon fiber back on here. So there's the basis for our carbon plate. Now we're going to clean it up and, uh, and start drilling some holes. Okay, hello again. Um, I've skipped a couple steps here. Uh, <laughs> just because I got busy and forgot to film it, so I'll kind of try to catch you guys up. Um, first of all, as you can see here, I have um, used just some normal painter's masking tape to tape the uh, aluminum stock chassis to the carbon fiber chassis that we're building. Now all that does is just keep the it just keeps the uh, the two components lined up while you're drilling your holes. Uh, another thing that I've done is taken a metal file, this one right here. Uh, and gone around all the edges here uh, along with some I believe about 600 grit sandpaper um, To, to kind of take the edge off the scroll saw does a pretty good job of making a, a good finish But it's nothing compared to what you can do with some sandpaper now that is really dust intensive So be sure you're wearing your mask when you do that uh, Now at this point, I'm going to use a uh, number 30 drill bit um, and I'm just going to go through and punch a hole everywhere there's a hole on the chassis um, except for these here along the outside because my chassis is going to be just a few millimeters wider and uh, we'll see that in a minute why these holes is here um, can't be drilled yet so anyways uh, using a drill press here if you don't have a drill press a hand drill works just fine as well and luckily this operation is not all that dust intensive probably still a good idea to uh, to wear a mask but um, not as critical here as when you're sanding and, uh, and cutting this stuff. So here we go. That's all for now. Um, you might notice on the back side here, it makes some kind of uh, ugly holes. Uh, don't worry about that. We will clean those up with a chamfer or a camphor tool uh, a little bit later. Okay, now we're going to be taking care of these slots. Uh, this is a size 21 bit, which is 0.159. Um, I find that it, uh, it's easiest to do these. Move this a little bit. Just with the standard drill bit and just uh, drag them across. 
Um, later we'll get into some Dremelin to, uh, to clean them up and there's actually a, kind of an undercut on the other side that we'll have to deal with. So these can be kind of a bear, but not that big of a deal, we'll make it happen. Next up for the spur gear slot, we are uh, out of our numbered bits, and now we're in just standard. This is a standard quarter inch uh, bit. So same deal here. We're going to drill a series of holes all the way along, and then just drag it across. So we finished drilling all of our holes and all of our slots. Um, now we come to perhaps the most challenging part here and really the only part that you desperately need a drill press for. Um, these slots here uh, have a recessed portion to them. It's not, it's not a, a uh, countersink, it's really just a milled out spot. Now. Nobody I know has a CNC mill at home that they can do this with. So what I've done here is taken an end mill bit from a Dremel tool and chucked it up in my drill press. And I have limited the travel so that it can't quite bottom out. That's as low as it gets. So what that's going to let me do is hold the thing down and uh, just move the plate around and uh, grind out the area that I need. Uh, to duplicate that on the stock part. So here we go. Double check the thickness there. Okay, now to kind of clean this up. We can um, take a uh, take a new razor blade and just kind of gently scratch it along the surface here, um, and it'll take off those uh, those stray fibers that are kind of sticking up. Uh, you want to be careful not to scratch up your carbon. This generally does a pretty good job if you have a little bit of patience. Okay, guys, the final operation that we got to do here is make all these uh, countersink or countersunk holes in this plate. Um, so once again, the drill press helps here, it probably isn't required. We can set the, uh, the stop so that it only goes down so far. And then you can just do this at will. It's going to take a couple of practice tries to, uh, to, to get at the right depth. Uh, make sure you have a spare screw just sitting around so that you can check it. Okay, well I think I finally got it right. This uh, this first one I actually went just a little bit too far. I don't know if you can see it's recessed in there. Uh, but this one, I backed it off a little bit and it is uh, just about perfect. With just a little bit of tension on it, I think it'll sink in there completely. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And now, because we have our stop set, uh, it's just a straight, you know, we can do this about as fast as we can pull the Okay, so after all of the machining and making the plate and everything that we've done, uh, we finally have our finished product. Um, all the screw holes are countersunk. Uh, we've got these little guys milled out. Now one thing that I have not done is this cut out here, um, but it isn't really necessary to put the thing together, so I, I don't think I'm going to do that, except if I need to save weight. Uh, as it turns out, this thing is massively overbuilt. Um, it's thicker than stock. It is substantially stronger and stiffer than stock and unfortunately it weighs almost the exact same thing or it almost it weighs almost the exact same which is kind of disappointing uh, this is 267 grams 
this one's 270 grams so we actually gained a little weight with this because I overbuilt it so much uh, in future iterations I think I'll, I'll probably cut down the thickness quite a bit because it is way stronger than it needs to be uh, but now we just got to put the thing back together okay everyone I wanted to uh, do this little addendum to show the uh, latest and last iteration of my uh, carbon fiber trooper chassis so the one that we just made was actually a uh, carbon fiber and fiberglass and it turned out really heavy. This one is actually a balsa sandwich. So we've got a layer of carbon uh, oriented at zero degrees, a layer of carbon oriented at 45 degrees, so going off to the side, a piece of 1 16th inch balsa wood, and then we repeat the carbon on the other side. So a layer of 45 and a layer of zero. Um, and this thing turned out great. It weighs 124 grams, so that's about 140 grams savings over the stock part. Um, and it is every bit as stiff as the aluminum piece and weighs half as much. Uh, this is a little bit different carbon fiber. This is actually a, uh, a different weave. Um, so it doesn't quite have the same diagonal twill pattern that the, the typical carbon fiber has. Uh, but really nice stuff, and this thing turned out great. So if you're going to be making some thicker pieces like what we're doing here, a balsa sandwich is definitely uh, a good option for you. Thanks for watching.